All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Stoops. You may have seen some of my videos on YouTube, and I'll be covering Lost Ark with the launch of the beta taking place on November 4th. And I really wanted to make this video because I know so many people are struggling which on which class to pick. And I'm joined here by one of my gurus. I also wanted to make this video because I wanted to shout out my friend Saint here. Um, he has been super helpful for me in getting into Lost Ark. I'll let him introduce himself, and then we'll jump into the context of the video. Alrighty, hello everybody. My name is Saint Tone. Uh, I've been playing Lost Ark for a, an embarrassingly long amount of time, but I, I guess relative to how long you and your audience were playing, you know, like like World of Warcraft before this, yeah. I guess it really isn't that long. Uh, looking back in retrospect, the game's only been live in my region for only three years now. Yeah. But uh, in that time, I've, I've tried my best to accumulate my own wealth of knowledge. I've been through the low points of Lost Ark and the high points, and uh, I'm really excited to get to see everybody experience the best parts of it. That's good. That's good. Okay, a few disclaimers here. Number one, please go follow his YouTube channel. It'll be somewhere here on the screen and his Twitch. Usually you, t you touch on these things at the end, but... The guy deserves a lot more attention, so please go uh, show him some support. I really want his his content to get out there because it's been super helpful for me. Okay, but a couple of disclaimers here. Number one, it is like, I don't know what time it is where Saint is. He has not slept, so he's probably pretty tired. I'm fried, but the beta is coming up. We want to make this video. My brother's watching fantasy sports downstairs, so you might hear him yell in the background and the window's open. So there might be some, we're just going to be chilling here and... Uh, it's going to be a bit more freestyle, but we were, we are going to go over all the classes in the game, touch on them, but more so we're going to touch on, uh, you know, the idea of making sure you kind of pick the right class and how unforgiving or forgiving is the game uh, in terms of if you want to switch later on. So I have a few topics here. Uh, we're going to start off with the idea of making alts. So if you saw my last video touching on Lost Ark, I did mention the idea that alts are super impactful in Lost Ark currently and how the game works. And, um, you know, with the beta coming up, a lot of people are going to be trying out a bunch of different classes. And I know some people are worried about which class should I main. But I've been telling people that, well, you don't have to worry too much about this. You can kind of have a couple of classes and then by then you'll have an idea of what you want to play. So what do you think about alts in Lost Ark? Um, how important really are they, Saint? And do you think uh, it's a bit more forgiving than other games you've played in the past when, when it comes to switching your, your tune around? Uh, well, in the case of Lost Ark, uh, it's kind of been embedded in our heads that we need alts for one reason or another. And they kind of built the game around the idea of having alts as well. And in my game service in Korea, they frequently give us, like, you know, they give us boosts to instantly get an alt up to level 50 and, you know, get its foot in the door to start doing end game content so that it could start generating materials and stuff. And so it's kind of like a, it's, it's two ways. The first way is that you play an alt and it gets you materials and then whatever materials are unbound, you can just like shove them into your account storage and then move them over to your main. And then that's there to empower your main and speed up its progress along. But then on the other side, it's the fact that in Lost Ark, classes are partially the content of the game. And when you go through content that you've been through before on your main, but you do it on an alt, a completely different class and a completely different play style, it doesn't exactly, it doesn't feel the same because they're so different in how they play. And so Lost Ark currently today uh, in my region has 21 classes. And it's really common that people, they, they get a new class and they just want to make it. They want to play it. So part of it yeah. is enjoyment and part of it is gain. So I, I'd still say that it's important for, for both of those reasons. Yeah, yeah. So what we're referring to is just, you know, you're able to farm sometimes more gold depending on, you know, what the gold making methods are like in Lost Ark. Uh, the version that you'll be getting on NA and EU, you'll be able to get more mats and uh, you'll be able to finish your opponents, your dailies a little bit faster within the week. So there's some benefits to having alts for sure. Um, and as he touched on earlier, that was one of the things that I really liked about the game was that sometimes, you know, a class might be coming out based on the roadmap that they release and you might start farming some gold so you can get that character caught up to your main. 
I think you did that with the Sork, right? So yeah, I mean, you, you see these trailers, they come out and they're they're so well done, they're so exciting. <laughs> yeah, they are really good. You, yeah. you see it and immediately you're like, I'm I'm that main now. Yeah. It, yeah, it could be coming out like eight months from now. I'm already that main. Don't even ask me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So alts are a nice part of the game, and they're they're just fun to play, and that's a lot of the content that you can expect, especially in NA and EU, and we're, you know now that it's you know region unlocked, other places in the world that'll be getting the game. Do we call it the Western version now, or do we keep calling it NA NAEU? Because now it's like so. I don't even know what open. to call it. Uh, the global release. I mean, it's not full. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I don't want to step on anyone's toes yeah. with calling it global. <laughs> the new release of the game. Okay, with the release of the game, you know, you'll, you'll be getting a lot of classes that might be, you know, kind of like filler content for you in between these tiers. So that's pretty exciting, and a lot of you can look forward to maybe playing that Lance Master because I know many of you guys wanted. Uh, a lot of people have been wanting to play that class. I can't, everyone asked me about it. But I also want to touch on really quickly the thing that I noticed coming into the game from WoW after playing for so long. There's so many server-wide systems. I kind of refer to them as account-wide systems, but technically they're server-wide. And there's just so many things in the game that benefit all of your characters. So it does feel like, you know, runes are an example, skill points are an example, cards are an example. I think bravery, intellect, and all of those personal stats are also an example, right? Those, uh... Yep. So that's great because if you put a lot of work in into the game or on your main, it will also translate over to your alt. So you, I don't think you'll feel too bad if you ever have to switch off. But really quickly, I wanted to ask you, because I want to know, in my mind, it would be the best time to transition to a new character when a new tier comes out, right? Because there'll be a big jump in eye level and everyone will kind of get jumped up to around the same item level. Would you say that's like a fair representation of the system? If you do decide to change main, yes, it's a good time because that's when the gap has been shrunken the most between the people who decided to push versus the people who decided to wait at the jumping point. And so, you know, if if someone is at like uh, max enhancement on their items and someone is at the jumping point that we just discussed, when everyone jumps up, the gap turns from like this to like this. But in order to make that jump, you have to be able to gather enough materials for this new class. Yeah. To be able to immediately get to that point right away and then do the content and then make the jump. Yeah. So it, 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 it is a pretty good time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe save some mats once, once you're done enhancing your first character and then have that for the new class that comes out and try to catch it up then with those mats and then make the jump. Um, okay, so now that, you know, that was just a quick rundown of how alts work in the game and that maybe you shouldn't be too worried about having to pick the right class off the gate because I know it's a lot of pressure for a lot of people and I don't want to, you know, scare people into making the wrong decision. But I do want to inform you about your decision because I think that's also important. So a lot of people come from other MMOs and they talk about, you know, is the game a Holy Trinity game? And the, the question I always hear is like, are there healers in the game? Or is there direct healing? Can I be a healer? And my representation of the game is that, well, first of all, it's not a Holy Trinity style game, but I always say that healers in Lost Ark are a lot more like Discipline Priests from WoW. And if you've ever played a Dis Priest in WoW, you kind of know what I'm talking about is that to provide buffs and utility to your team, you have to deal damage to get that mechanic working in the first place. So maybe you could give the people listening an idea of how the class system works in the game, and what that Holy Trinity is like or how it exists within the game. How do supports benefit their teammates? Are there direct, is there direct healing and so on? Okay, um, so first of all, uh, Lost Ark borrows a lot from some of the other Korean MMOs in the space where it's pretty much just um, support and synergy, and that's it. So you have your support classes, which their role is to provide shields, attack buffs. That's their most important role. And then in emergency situations, heals. And we'll come back to that in a second, because that might sound weird to people who are coming from Holy Trinity games, which are used to like topping players off after every single attack and everything. Synergy refers to everybody else, all the damage dealers and how everyone has, you know, a little buff that they provide to the party, but otherwise their only role is to deal damage. And that's the only delineation between the two. You have the two support classes, Bard and Holy Knight, and then you have everything else. And the, the normal party format for basically everything in Lost Ark is one support, 
for every three damage dealers. As party sizes are four, raid content is eight, but that's four and four. And in this game, uh, whenever you provide a buff to your team or put a debuff on a boss, it only applies to your party. Um, and so, you know, the optimal formula has come down to one support, three DPSs. Um, outside of that, there's no tanks. There are tanky classes. And then there's a class that has a taunt, but it's not a real taunt. And really, the taunt on that class, which is the Gun Lancer, it's mainly used to interrupt a boss patterns. So it's not um, it's not your traditional holding aggro. Aggro tends to be random in this game. Yeah. I do think, though, if you are a tank player from WoW, you'd probably like the Warlord or Gun Lancer. Oh, yeah. I think appreciate it, it. Yeah, I think you'll vibe with that. So if you were like a person that just know that like you're not sitting there you would like to position in front of the boss right a lot of um frontal attacks what is the term for it? i always forget the term it's like head attack head attacks so a lot of head attacks and then you want to be there to counter so you will be kind of positioning in front of the boss and you can kind of just tank a lot of mechanics so i think if you are a tank player you would like the warlord mm -hmm. and i do think if you like playing you know support based classes you can still have a lot of fun. You know, someone that played a support... I, I never play support in MMOs. I have a bard all. I She's one of my favorites to play. Yeah. There's there... something about playing a bard that... It, it feels like you're running a daycare. <laughs> yeah. You're watching the little DPSs do their thing. And you're like, oh, little Jimmy, don't stand in that attack. Yeah. yeah. You'll, ping, <laughs> you'll ping at them to stand in your heel. That happens a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, um, and, and, and I do want to talk about the heals real fast sure, sure, because, sure. again, since it's not a Holy Trinity, it's really important that people know that healing is really limited in Lost Ark. And so mm -hmm. if you're going into the idea of playing a support, you have to be cautious with knowing that it comes with a caveat that healing is not easy. You always have to, it, it always comes with a condition. In the case of Bard, if you're healing, you're not giving damage buffs. They have to choose between the two. And if you're a Holy Knight, you can't give burst heals. You can only give heal over Lucio time. Lucio style heals, yeah. Yeah, so for the most part, people depend on potions if they mess up, and that's because, largely in part, Lost Ark is a game about dodging. It's, 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 it's action combat, so if a boss has an attack, almost always there's a solution to not getting hit by it. Mm -hmm. um, and so heals are basically something that only happens when someone messes up. Whereas in other games, there's heal checks and stuff like that. That doesn't exist yeah. in Lost Ark. Yeah. Having a support is insane, though. And also, to touch on, the, touch on the pot thing real quick, potions, you're limited usually depending on the encounter that you're doing. And they're also expensive. So when I started playing the game, I was ripping pots, dude. The active ones, the ones that, you know, they're expensive. You know, like yep. you don't want a pot. So... I won't do certain content, even though it's doable without a support, because I don't. I'm a cheapo. I don't want to spend any of my gold on. You on... know, the founders pack has a bunch of potions, yeah. and people are gonna burn through them in, while leveling up yeah. without knowing just how valuable those potions. I did that. Are. I did that. I was ripping purple pots when I was leveling. Like, don't do that. I don't... was dying on the inside. <laughs> <watching>. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't use those. Save them if you're gonna take them. Save them, but. Yeah, having yeah. a support is super valuable and you'll have a great time finding groups. Doing some of the solo content might be a little bit annoying, but not so much. I mean, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot of Holy Knight Chaos Dungeons, for example, and it's just fine. And then doing uh, Guardian Raids, I always do them as a group. You can't you can solo them, but it's more enjoyable. It's never recommended. Yeah. I mean, you can do them as a DPS and it's fun, but, you know, as a, you know, as a support, you'll definitely want to get groups, but you'll have no problem... For the most part, finding groups is a support. I'm assuming historically, every basically every region, there's always there's never been enough supports in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think though that we're gonna have a lot of <laughs> DPS holy knights. I, I, uh, I know. I feel so <laughs> bad about it because like in every marketing material for the holy knight, <laughs> they make it look like he can DPS well. You know, they have it. They, okay, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll leave this in or I'll have him cut it up. But what does it say here? I don't care. What do they say about the paladin? Paladins have a direct line to powers of the gods, channeling their ancient might into potent offensive abilities and defensive moves. It's just like, you know, it seems like they do big damn. And you can do some damn, but you're not there to do big damn. So if you're looking to play a rep paladin, the Holy Knight probably ain't it, but you know, whatever. Unfortunately, there's no DPS meter, so you'll you'll never know. Never that you're know. <laughs> yeah, you could just oh, you'll, you won't be in the you won't be in the family portrait. But okay, so really quickly, I want to talk about the difference between melee and ranged. Uh, this is the second time I'm recording this, by the way. 
Um, I know that in a lot of MMOs, a lot of players find that range is a lot easier to um, get used to, like the boss patterns, mechanics. Usually you can see a lot more on the screen, but in Lost Ark, you have this overhead view. So everyone kind of shares the same viewpoint for the most part. And I know for myself, I started the game as a melee and found range to be a bit more difficult in some of the uh, end game raids, raids, but I know that's something that you wanted to touch on. So how does melee and rage differ based on the tier between tier one content and tier three content? Okay, so I I, I mained, uh, and it's, it's not as funny the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> I made I'll a berserker. It, yeah. <laughs> I made a berserker, and then recently sorcerers came out. I love spellcasters in, in MMOs, any sort of casting kind of class, so I made that transition from melee to range. So for the better majority of my time playing the game, I, I played as melee, and I always found that the initial part of learning content is very difficult because, you know, a class like Berserker, it's a high commit class. It's very slow and sluggish, and it's very susceptible to getting hit by stuff. And among all the warriors, he's also technically the squishiest. So you know, Berserkers in Korea, there's a meme about them. Yeah, I've heard, I've, heard this me I've heard this meme yeah. already now, yeah. You're, you're either a boomer who's floor POV, <laughs> or you're the Giga Chad that carries raids and MVPs by a mile. And it's like 95% the first one and like 5% the second one. And so, you know, they tend to die a lot because it's like you're learning content. But in tier one content, bosses are like very slow, they're very meticulous, and it's not that bad for melee. And ultimately, what Lost Ark comes down to, and this is like probably, like if you think about it, it it's, it's the truest thing. Once you've learned content, you subconsciously think to pre-position in certain ways the moment you see a boss do something so that you have the most amount of time to do damage back or to get in position for a positional or really just to get in a few attacks before the mm -hmm. boss does whatever it's going to do again. And in the first part of learning content, you don't know any of this stuff. So, you, you know, you, you really scramble to find out when you can attack a boss. But once you've done it for like hours and hours, the boss like blinks and you're like, OK, it's going to do this, this and this. And I can move right here and then I can get all my attacks in without getting hurt at all. And that just comes with experience. And that's like the deal with melee. And in the case of range, though, range is like, I'll just stand out here and just chuck a few fireballs and stuff. But even in the case of ranged, um, because of the way the boss does its attacks, so many bosses have attacks that are easier to dodge in melee range. So a lot of the times I find my yeah. sorceress, even though she's a range class, I'm playing in melee range regardless, just because if I'm playing in range, I'm going to get hit by a cone or something that has a half second telegraph that's impossible to dodge if I'm, you know, too far away. Yeah. Yeah. I found, <clears throat> I found my experience going from melee to range, realizing I don't like ranged at all. Uh, but that's because I played a gunslinger. We'll, we'll we'll get to that class in particular in a little bit in my experience with that. But yeah, so melee and range, different play styles, obviously. Um, but I think they're both really fun in their own way. Yeah, they're both very viable too. I mean, I've I've had no problems MVPing on either of them. Yeah, you're a chat. I'm the I'm the 95 percent boomer for sure on the <laughs> Zerker, dude. It is hard. But we'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about Zerker uh, difficulty in a little bit. Um, so with all of that melee and ranged, picking a support, picking a DPS, let's talk about really quickly before getting into what, you know, touching on the classes in themselves, let's talk about party buffs, utility, overall damage, because not every class that does the most damage is the, you know, damage isn't everything, right? Utility is a big yeah. part of the game. I learned that early on with just impairment skills, for example, um, Basing your groups, you know, based on that, which 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 class brings damage buffs, which class brings mobility buffs, things like that. So, this is something that I would like to learn even more about, even though I've been learning a lot about it. Can you break mm. down the importance of party buffs, utility, and damage, and how those differ amongst classes? All right. So, you know, in, among the highest level of content in the game, sometimes people ask, okay, why don't you bring this class that you know it's known as like, why don't you just bring all of that class and then like two supports? And what it pretty much comes down to is that having a mixed set of party buffs that can stack with each other will usually have a, a much greater bearing than having just a class that's like strong, there's raw strong. Um, and 
different classes bring different things enough so so much to the point where there's not really any classes that are left out so some class some classes like uh like warlord or or sorceress or destroyer they have fantastic destruction and there's certain mechanics in the game especially in the late game where you want to have destruction just to uh, just because there's there's checks where if you don't do it the boss becomes significantly harder or there's the case of neutralization damage you play a berserker it has one of the highest neutralization ratings in the game and you've seen how basically every raid boss that you've encountered in the end game has some sort of neutralization check mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not just talking about like the end game in tier three but even in the lower end game you yeah. remember yeah rohendel it, it, yeah. it was the same thing yeah that was fun though so so people had to learn really quickly about the importance of, of, of neutralization um there's different kind of party buffs there's uh party buffs that are up all the time there's party buffs that are really powerful but they're only up for really small windows and um those those are called burst synergies where you know you have to time them with everyone else when everyone else has their stuff as opposed to the small buffs which are just you you apply it and you don't have to think about it because it's up all the time and so people who pick those classes need to be mindful that if you pick up a, a burst synergy you know it's very reliant on knowing when you should use them the boss goes down or the buff uses their buff and you you always time your buff based off of their buff since they're the the support so it's something to keep in mind when you make that choice what kind of synergy you're working with and what kind of traits your skills have even something so much as counter skills which is a more advanced mechanic of the game for beginners uh they they recently added um parryable attacks on all of the lower level content uh I've even though we're past it now raids. yeah i've seen yeah. some of the guardian raids yeah so so all the players from na and eu they will go through all these contents where there's parryable attacks that they can do now and it's something to know that certain classes have better counters to parry those attacks than others as well so there's all these different like little nuanced things that you need to take into consideration about the class beyond oh is, is it ranged and how much damage it does it's it's all these little extra factors yeah i'll have a document down below i think i have one with all of the different synergies and party buffs and I, does your does your your encyclopedia that you have online cover all of this or no yes it does so i'll have that linked below saint has like an insane just overview of the game in general so i'll have that linked below so you guys can kind of look through some of these if you're interested uh they give you an idea of how some of these work and which classes have what i think i have something as well so Okay, so with all that in mind, I wanted to give you a rundown of just how, you know, classes differ from one another in terms of just like in general in the game. But I really wanted to touch on this point because it's something that I noticed a lot coming to this game. So if you're at least from WoW and a lot of other games too, it's not just WoW, just any game in general within just the gaming space. There's just like tier list Andes and... um you know, just what's the best class, what class does the best damage, which one's the best between these two. And I wanted to talk about the importance of really picking what you like versus picking what's the best or what do you think is the best? Because that stuff can kind of just change overall. Maybe you can share a story based on your experience. You know, I think Sork is an example of a class that was really insane out the gate, well, got buffed and was insane, then got nerfed and just making sure you pick what you like. But more so, I want to talk about, we'll get to that as well, but bring the player, not the class. And um, why don't we start with a story of maybe you have an example of a class that Destroyer could be one. And a class that was insane, and then people would swap over to it, then it gets nerfed, and then you, maybe you feel bad about your decision. This has happened so many times in the last year already, where you know something meta appeared. That would just seems so insane. Then everyone flocked to that class. I can count four situations off the top of my head already. There was a case of Summoner at the beginning of season two. She just seems so powerful um, because because all the content was new and it was the shift of systems that oriented towards living in raids versus doing damage. And Summoner was just so versatile at that. I mean, we'll talk about that when we talk about the class sure. itself. And then she ended up eating nerfs. She had uh, multiple nerfs, actually, multiple patches in a row. And all the people that rolled Summoner, all of a sudden, you know, they, they didn't feel great. And then there was the case of Soul Master. And Soul Master is this hilarious class that's basically Goku from Dragon Ball Z. And yeah. there, was, there was an engraving called Initiative at the time. And the way that Initiative <laughs> works, I actually meant to tell you about this engraving because it makes Chaos Dungeons super fun. <laughs> okay. uh, the, way, the way it works is that when you hit an enemy that has max HP, the attack is a guaranteed crit 
and it gets um up to 100 it gets 160 percent additional crit oh, wow. damage it's huge for chaos dungeons okay so it, it's an opener <laughs> attack and you know in, in chaos dungeon yeah. it would just obliterate everything on the first hit you don't even need crit chance because everything's a guaranteed crit but previously it used to work on bosses so what people would do is they would take a soul master just buff the living hell out of her and then she would open the fight with a spirit bomb <laughs> yeah and there were all these videos floating around of like bosses dying instantly in one hit and then there was the case and there was the most extreme case of reaper a class that's not in na in eu right away she was so overtuned at the gate and this coincided with the huge population boom of lost stark so all the new players that came in they were like wow this class is insane they all rolled reaper and then reaper took like a 30 40 percent nerf in a single patch and all of a sudden people didn't feel so great about it anymore you know it's like a avengers meme and yeah. you know people dropped out of the class even though today she's extremely competitive still and they didn't change anything that's how much that nerf was warranted so you know all these stories it's basically saying how people flocked to a class and then found out that after it was adjusted because smilegate does these adjustments fairly regularly several times a year in fact um you know you can't just pick off of meta you have to play something that you genuinely like it even happened with sorceress sorceress there were so many of them and now there's so few because she ate nerfs and she's just kind of frustrating to play yeah yeah i think that's something that uh you know although it's maybe a bit easier to get alts going in this game and they're not it's not too punishing in making alts i think it's important to play what you like um because mm -hmm. for me as a player that's been playing for a couple months now and i've been going through all of the raids in the game and trying to do all the, the most difficult content i can do i've never once thought about like oh i don't want to bring this class uh i don't want to take this class I, I, you know i don't you know that, it's much different than my experience playing wow and it might be similar to final fantasy where it's bring the player not the class so well I, what is it like in wow are there builds that are just straight up dead oh <laughs> there's so many classes that are straight up dead <laughs> really yeah there's classes that are just dead for sure how many I, mean, I haven't played wow in 14 years how many classes are there now even in that game uh i can't remember off the top of my head it's, it's a, well the specs are like their own classes as well like, yeah, yeah there's a course. huge difference i mean maybe 12 or something i can't remember mm. off the top of my head but there's there's you know a handful of classes but you know i would just be looking all right like we need damage. I want a fire mage. Okay. I want the best healer. I'm looking for disc priests or druids or disc priests or paladins, for example. You don't want to mm. bring anything else other than that. So in this game, it's just not like that. I mean, you know, be I think people would be, will be very surprised to see that, like, for a class that has, for a game that has like over 20 classes and there's always more coming in, it's surprisingly well balanced. Yeah. 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 So don't worry too much about that and just play what you enjoy for sure. I think that's going to be as cheesy yep. as it sounds. And it's like, oh, just play what you like, man. I was the guy in WoW telling people don't play what you like. It's a, it's a rip. I would, I would say that in my videos because you're just not going to play the game. But mm -hmm. in this game, I honestly think you can just kind of play what you like. So. Yeah. And this, this is also really important for people that are coming in from games like Path of Exile, by the way, because uh, anyone who plays like a seasonal game like that, you know, you take like a couple months off from the game when, when a new when a new league starts up. You, you're on a blank slate. A Lost Ark, though, it's it's a long-term game. You're yeah. building up the same character for literally years. So you really have to make sure that you like the idea of the class more so than its capabilities. Yeah, it'll change over time, right? The class might go up, yeah. might go down. So even yeah. even if it's not based off patches, it could it could be like, oh, they introduced a new gear set, and all of a sudden DPS Bard is viable, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The sets are important, so we'll talk about that in another video that we're doing. I mm -hmm. think so. Okay, so let's kind of hop into um, just keeping all of that in mind into the classes themselves. So I'm going to try my best to not spend too much time on each class, but I'll give you some insight on what I've learned playing with these classes, how they vary in PvE and PvP content. Um, and yeah, just give you, you know, give you an idea if that class might be for you. So we're going to start with the warrior first, and mm. that's going to... We're going to talk about the classes that will be out at launch. Okay, not the classes that won't be out at launch, the ones that will be out at launch. So for right. the warrior, we have the Holy Knight, the Berserker, and the Warlord or Gunlancer, Holy Knight or Paladin. I'm going to mess these names up because I'm not used to them, but 
Sucks. Yeah, it is what it is. The names aren't that great, in my opinion. Some of them aren't good, but whatever. So Paladin first. Uh, I'll give some insight for really quickly. Th that class in particular was the one that I really wanted to play because they look like Chad's. The picture of the. Did you think it was a DPS? No, no, I didn't think it was a hmm. DPS. Um, because I learned early on watching a tier list. Because uh, oh, I came from God. another game that I learned that there were supports. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But I'm a support kind of guy. So the Holy Knight in PvP is absolutely insane. And that's why I started playing the game. The class is nuts, right? Like they're so, so strong. Uh, just their shields are so valuable in PvP. And also in PvE content as well. Um, they're more about peeling for sure. That's what I've learned as well. But you can definitely add some damage. So if you like being an offensive support, at least in PvP, you definitely get that vibe from the Holy Knight. And in PvE content, they're very fun to play. Some people would say that they're boring, but those are the people that I would say don't like playing a support. You know, I, I enjoy supporting my teammates. You know, I enjoy um, adding utility to the group and saving people if they're about to die. So I like the Holy Knight a lot, and it's a really strong class. Um, what I would say, though, overall, and maybe this is, a not, this is not a fair statement, but I do prefer Bard's a little bit more when I'm going through content I haven't done before. I'm not sure if that's a fair statement because the Holy Knight feel like the heals are not, the Lucio heal is does not feel as powerful as the Bard heal. And I'm- because it's so small, you don't notice it. Yeah, it's very tiny. Whereas the Bard it heal- It builds up. Yeah. So yeah, so the Holy Knight's really fun. Um, and I definitely enjoy the class especially for PvP, but what, what do you think about the Holy Knight and who do you think it's for? The Holy Knight is for people who want to be like a like a buff power, just moving around pretty much. If you, if you want to feel like a badass while also like dishing out buffs, you know, Holy Knight's a good choice. I mean, in, the, in terms of support, uh, especially some of y'all pick based off of like even gender. And yeah. so if you want to play a guy support, uh, Paladin is like right up your alley. But Paladin's also in general, he came out way later than the other classes. So his general design and aesthetic is gorgeous. Yeah, it's it, everything. Everything looks and sounds really cool with him. Um, and then in PvP, as you touched on before, he's a very offensive support. Um, I, I should just, we should just mention this in general, but in PvP, the supports can also actually dish out a reasonable amount of damage because of the way that the skill sets are designed. It's not like raiding where supports really struggle to put out any damage, so they just focus on support. In PvP, their skills can actually chunk another yeah. player pretty hard because everyone's on an even playing field without things like engravings and whatnot. So yeah, um, yeah, Paladin is a really good choice. I will say that with the caveat of Paladin, though. He does not start with his support uh, awakening on launch. He actually has to get to item level 400 and do a four hour long quest in order to get that shield, the shield awakening. One. Yeah. Whereas Bard starts with her support awakening right away. So you'll have to actually play with your DPS uh, yeah. ultimate skill for a little while. Unless you're going to be the rep paladin, then you're chilling, you know, just go out there with the big damn awakening. Some people are listening, four hour quest. <laughs> I'm just going to be a rep paladin, man. Yeah. So they are, they're really fun though. Honestly, Holy Knight's going to be one of the classes that I play. I've enjoyed it a lot. And I think if you're someone that likes playing an offensive healer, you'll really like the Holy Knight. And the class I, I, sets look great. Their skins, I, I, I you, you mentioned that some people prefer playing with bards and on prog content. I prefer playing with Holy Knights. Really? Because they will always heal you. They don't have to make that choice between healing and, sh and, uh, and DPS buff. And they have a cleanse. Bard does not have a cleanse. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I also don't have to stand in that specific spot. And they don't have to yell at me to ping to stand in this little circle. So that's also... Yeah. Bards like, tend to be a little bit pushier. They are. They, they ping so much. Yeah. A little I, sassy. One ping is fine. I've, I heard it. <laughs> the ping system. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Okay, Zerker, Berserker. This is the class that I didn't want to play. Both of us played this, yeah. Both of us played this. This was a class that I didn't want to play. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it is my class. I don't want to keep it biased, but I wanted to be a Holy Knight. Ended up playing the Zerker. And uh, the Zerker, in my experience, is everyone said it's going to be an easy class. It was not easy. I was lied to. The Zerker is... Uh, slow and clunky early on yep but it's all about landing your burst windows however it feels much better like i'm sure all classes do but in particular the zerker feels so much better once i started getting my sets 
my runes, higher amounts of specialty, somewhere I guess to the Holy Knight, but it felt so much better. Um, but it's in PvP as well. It's definitely not going to be the class that you think you're going to run in there and just deal like you deal a lot of damage. But again, you're similar to the Holy Knight. You're kind of waiting for people to initiate so that you can initiate because a lot of your openers are a bit predictable in my experience. Um, I think it depends a little bit depending on like the quality of players you're playing. As. That's oh, why yeah. They, call, they oh, yeah. call the Berserker the noob stomper. Yeah, class. for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. That is so true. Because early on, you can just steamroll. I think early on, an NA Zerker will be crazy off the gate. Yep. You will. Uh, but I think when you get players that are, it, you, it's just so easy to see what the Zerker's going to do. It's the, very, it's the same opener, same finishing skill. So, um, yeah, overall, I think the Zerker's a great class, but I don't think anyone should fall for the idea that it's this easy class to play because I, I personally don't think it is because you're just, the slower you are, the harder it is to deal damage and you have to really know your burst windows. Is that a fair your generalization? Experience, your experience would have been very different if Madness was available right from the get-go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, j just to explain to people listening, Madness is one of the class passives that was recently buffed in Korea. So Stevenson hasn't been ha he hasn't had the opportunity to experience it yet. But that build, it's vastly different from the build that he plays. And it, it removes a lot of that clunkiness in exchange for always being at low HP. So that, that, that just goes in to touch on a completely different subject that, you know, different classes they can be played in different ways that will feel very different from one another. But to your assessment, it is very true that the typical and, and meta and known Berserker build, it is it has a downtime window where it feels terrible. But when he's in his Berserker state, when he's like red and glowy and crazy, you feel invincible during it. It's yeah. crazy. It's really good. And I think we can touch on this too with the upcoming classes we have for the past two. How it will feel in tier one content versus tier three content, and yeah, I a good a good a statement on that is that when you get more specialty as a zerker, certain stats will change your class in different ways. You get to stay in that state longer, your runaway state a bit longer, where you're yep. all glowy and stuff like that. So the class feels a lot better, and it scales. It feels like really well over time. So zerker, I think, fantastic class really fun but don't fall for the idea that it's as easy as people make it to, you know out to be yeah so. it'll it'll feel okay in tier one where things are like pretty tame it gets harder okay warlord or gunlancer same mm. class uh mm. i love playing with this class why don't you talk a little about the warlord or gunlancer it's my favorite class to group up with it is the odd man out because it's the only... First of all, it doesn't... People look at it, they're like, oh, it's a tank. He's a DPS. He's a DPS that can also flex into the role of support, and he's the only class in the game that can do that. It, the, the, depending on the way you play him, he just sits in attacks and doesn't care about mechanics. For the longest time, we've called him the most OP class in the game. Yeah. Because he's just good in every content. Um, in the case of PvP, it's a little bit different because he his kit did not, I guess, age well against a lot of the newer classes, so it can be harder to climb with him. But yeah. in like a pre-made comp, like say a tournament setting, because NAE will have a lot of tournaments, of course, he can be ridiculously good if the person who's playing behind him knows how to peel efficiently with him. Yeah, a lot of the tier list Andes do think that Warlord will be good early on in NA. And I think if you find a few of them online, I'm sure you've looked them up if you're watching this video. They have them pretty high up in the tier list. Uh, they just bring... The shield is so strong. Your, 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 your group-wide shield is so strong. I mean, essentially, your, your teammates are immune to damage. And uh, they deal, like, good damage. They're super durable. And they just... I would, you know, every group when I have, like, a, you know, bard and a holy... A bard and a warlord or a bard or Holy Knight and a Gun Lancer. Uh, it's just, they're, they're insane. So I think that if you're someone that's looking to pick up a class that can kind of do it all, you like the support vibe, but you want to deal damage, you can be thrown into any group, I think you'll have a great time on the class overall. However, I do think the leveling probably isn't the most enjoyable experience, but that was at least how I felt. It's a little rough until you get into your 20s, and then you get a spell that, like, it's called, like, Guardian Thunder or something, and it's, like, an AoE skill, so yeah. it gets a little bit better. Um, but, you know, touching on that point, whenever I look for daily parties to do, like, raid content with, 
I always like to see it as a warlord. Oh, they're so great. They're so insane. Yeah. My favorite class to play with. Okay. So that's the warriors. Those those are the warriors. Those are some of my favorite classes in the game. I either love playing with them or love playing as them. Uh, let's talk about the martial artists or fighters. Starting mm. with the striker. I think this class is going to be super popular in NA. Everyone mm -hmm. loves playing it. And I've never played one. But they look incredibly fun. However, some people have some negative things to say about the striker in terms of PvP and PvE. So mm. do you think that's warranted? Do you think that the class is a little much of a, you know, is it somewhat of an underperformer? Um, so as far as PvP goes, it's kind of, it's, it's fairly warranted because his kit is a little bit lacking as far as engagement goes because uh, Lost Ark PvP specifically has always kind of favor like, it, it, the meta has really shifted towards like these poking classes especially a lot of the newer classes that really excel at this yeah. uh and and striker does not have a lot of super armor options or uh, like ways to really fight in close range and contest in trades and people on that range he's excellent at harassing and in 1v1 he's hilariously good if the if the person operating him um is is good in pve you know, you would think that he is, since he's a gender unlocked, that he should play exactly like uh, the War Dancer class. But I found his playstyle to be very frustrating because of the skills that changed. Were they they required you to be in a certain spot to charge up and to hit in a positional, and it just didn't feel fun to me. It put out huge numbers, but it yeah. didn't feel fun to me. Yeah. With all of that being said, though, I just cleared, we just did Be a Kiss today. And I think in all of my raids, I've always brought my friend Encore, who's a striker. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, it has a top tier synergy. So he has an amazing party buff. And then, second of all, if the person is good with him, he'll, he, they can MVP on it. It, it. It's, it's a super strong class in the right hands, but it takes a person who likes that play style. Yeah. To enjoy playing it. Super mobile, like in PvP as well. Like, I've gotten smashed by good strikers just because they're I'm not used to them yet, you know. So because they just came to RU. So overall, you know, again, like take all of this with a grain of salt. We're just giving you some insight on the class in particular, but mm. you'll hear you will hear things about strikers not being so amazing in PVE or PVP content. But again, I've done all of the raids that I can do, and I'm moving on to doing Cuckoo Satan with a striker. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. With that being said, let's talk about the battle master, which is like the female counterpart or the war dancer uh, to the striker. I mean, it's just going to be a thing. I don't know. It's <laughs> people are going to have to get used to it at this point. There'll be times people who are YouTubing like these names and they're like, yeah, what do I put? Do I put strike? Do I put war dancer or striker? Or I, I mean, whatever. I'm wondering, or war dancer or battle master? What do I do in the in the on YouTube? Like, what are they going to be searching? I guess war dancer, right? They will, yeah, yeah. They, they don't know the name Battlemaster. Okay, so War Dancer, the female counterpart to the Striker. Uh, how does that differ from the Striker? You touched, touched on it a little bit, and what is your experience with it? Because I think that was the class that you were considering playing. Yes, uh, she's a really underrated class because she's always been kind of overshadowed by some of the other classes, despite being a really top, like, a, a fantastic class to play with. She's one of the classes that if I see it is in my party, I immediately get really excited because one, she's very reliable because she's an agility based class. And we can go back for a second in the case of Striker, while he does have an agility build that recently became viable, most people play him in a specialization build. And so they don't have very high agility and they're very slow and, and kind of clunky. Battlemaster, on the other hand, her her meta build that you know a lot of people play is really high in agility. So she's quick and she's snappy and she gets her rotations in quickly. Uh, I do think that she is a very high skill ceiling class in PVE because of certain timings that you need with um, some, of, some of her skills. And the way that she works is she has a buff that she can buff her own damage by 55% by six, for six seconds. And you have to get all your damage in in that six seconds. And so, you know, timing everything with her can be kind of difficult. Um, so she's always been considered a really powerful class, and she even received quite a bit of nerfs recently because of I how powerful that. she is. Yeah, yeah. just her reliability is so high. She's so, and most people who play her can, you know, they'll dodge everything and they'll do the damage that there's expected from them while giving excellent buffs. In PvP, on the other hand, though, 
she actually is considered an inferior version of the striker class, which, as we just discussed, some people, they don't look favorably upon it. So it's just a little bit tougher, even though she's one of the best harassers in the game. She doesn't have all the tools that um, are needed. She used to be top tier. In, yeah, in they got nerfed. PvP. They got nerfed. But they took a really heavy nerf yeah. that just, it, it made it so hard to play her, and especially in a growing environment with these new classes coming in that just abuse yeah. you at a range. There is somebody on RU, I'm not going to remember his name, that poor soul, I feel so bad, but I know Blinks plays with him a lot, and he's insane at yeah. War Dancer. So again, you know, this yeah. is always with the caveat that if you're an incredible player, you could make what people consider a bad class and bring it into Grandmaster or bring it into the, the Hell Mode raids. Yeah. You know, every class is capable of both being a top pvp -er and a top PvE-er. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. Yeah. So just giving you some insight. Okay, Soul Fist. This is the class that I really wanted to play because I love Dragon Ball Z and it's literally the Goku class. You, yep. you, you have a Spirit Bomb and you have like... You know, you have like Super Saiyan's dances and stuff like that. So I asked you about this class and you had mentioned that, um, you know, it, it can feel a little awkward based on your identity gauge. So can you talk about that? But more so, how do you feel about the class? I know they're great in PvP, especially. And they're, they're, they're good, in all, good at PvP. They're good in all forms of content. Yeah. Um, how do they perform in tier one content? And what do you think about the class overall? So in the case of Soul Master, I have one and I rarely play her. I actually didn't enjoy her playstyle because it was, you know, she's kind of a mid-range, close-range fighter in PvE. And then she has this huge reliance on landing her ultimate skill. And it's, it's, it's literally a spirit bomb. Anyone who's watching this video has probably at some point or another seen a class showcase where she jumps in the air, raises <laughs> yeah. her hand. Uh, two hours later, chucks a spirit bomb. And then, you know, if the enemy's there, fantastic. If it went to go get a coffee, well, you missed. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's, it has this huge reliance on both her identity gauge because that's where all of her damage is inside her. They call it hype in NA and EU. That's what her identity is called, her hype state. <laughs> Don't laugh, but I... I, I <laughs> hype? Wait, it's like hype one, hype two, hype three? Or yeah, yeah, it? that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so dude. when when you're in that that state, your your damage is basically unparalleled. It's it's super high. But then there's a downtime, and unlike Berserker, who as time goes on, his his identity state grows, and he can stay in his Berserk state longer. No matter how much you raise your Soul Master, it's like a set period of time where she's in that state, and then a set cooldown time where she's not in that state. And I didn't enjoy the time where she was not in that state. I didn't enjoy having to land that alt because, you know, it, it literally takes like six seconds to chuck that thing. And you never know what a boss is going to do in six seconds, if it's going to teleport away or backstep or something. And I didn't like having that reliance on it. That being said, when we cleared Albershed, it, there was a Soul Master in our party and they did MVP often. And so it's the kind of class where if you practice on it, her damage is ridiculous. She has the single hit, hardest hitting attack in the game. So if you want to see like massive numbers as well, you know, that's that's a class you can play. Okay. Okay. So Scrapper or Infighter. Uh, this class is like the OG of Lost Ark. A lot of people refer to it as that. At least I've heard it's like, I don't personally, I didn't enjoy leveling the class. I started leveling it and I stopped. You just have half your skills and you go into the other half. I don't know. I didn't really enjoy that aspect of the class, but... Maybe you could sell me on Scrapper and Fighter. You know, it's a class that I haven't actually played that I do plan on playing in the beta because my chat voted on it. Did it so really I mean, win that vote? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not enthusiastic about that, but they did vote on that. So, But I've played with Infighters as well, many Infighters. She is actually the most popular fighter class in Korea, uh, and she's considered the gold standard of balance. Basically, there has never been a time ever, ever where she's been in a bad position. And okay. it kind of feels like that they balance the game around her, basically. Um, and that's in PvE specifically. PvP is another story, but in, in PvE, she's always been really good. And she has two viable builds that are very distinct from one another. One that's quick and snappy, and the other one that's based around big burst damage. So there's, there's options for people who play her who want that like heavy-handed punching style. One-punch man style. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, want options as well that, that they can change it later on down the line if they wish. 
PvP when it comes to Infighter, I, I think at some point or another, we've all had that experience of a PvP of an Infighter or a Scrapper rushing in our face and locking us down. She's an incredible harasser, but she also suffers from that problem where her kit didn't evolve well with the game. And so in a 3v3 format, she's often rendered vulnerable against a lot of these newer classes. But that being said, in like 1v1 or just in a just like casual 3v3, she's she's great at locking someone down if, if she if they don't receive peel or assistance yeah and we won't have a lot of those newer classes at this gate right so no scouter yeah of course no uh, yep. lance master no arcana no yeah. i mean all of the classes that are annoying in pvp won't be in the game she'll do this... really well in pvp right out yeah. the gate i think all and, the classes and, will to be honest i feel like yeah, i don't think you should worry and, too much about that but it should really be pointed out as well that if if because we're talking about pve pvp but in PVE, when you pick a class, you're 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 stuck with that class pretty much. It's it's really hard to re-roll out of it, as we talked about before. But in PvP, if you want to play something else, it literally takes like three or four yeah. hours. Yeah, you don't have to and, base your main yeah. off of PvP as much. Exactly. You can kind of just play with like I'm not playing Zerker in PvP. I'll touch on that when we get to the class. Uh, I'm not playing Zerker in PvP, but I don't have to worry about that. I like Zerker in PvE. Um yep. and again, PvE, you, you can know play whatever you want. Yeah. Also fair to note that when we talk about the ability to reroll, we more so mean it when you get to the deeper end game of the game. You know, when you've invested a lot of time on your character, then it's kind of locked in. But early on, I don't think they should worry too much, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy early on. Yeah. We're talking about like my Zerker, for example. I put a lot of time into him at this point. So, and that's not even a lot, right? I put almost four months into him. I'm not trying to reroll off my Zerker at this point. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, in PvP, you just have to get to like level 26 or 27, and then you're it's equalized. So yeah. you're on the same footing as anyone else. So if, you, if you're like, oh, I hate my class in PvP, but that class looks cool. Three or four hours later, you have that class in PvP. You're ready to go on it. And yeah, it's, you can be a fought of Mandy. Be a fought of Mandy yep. at that point. So yeah. Okay. The gunner class, mm. right? The gunner class. It's not, okay, gunner. <laughs> What's that? Hawkeye. <laughs> okay. Hawkeye so or sharpshooter. Without the gun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Hawkeye because this is a class that I also. So many of the classes in this game I've wanted to play. I've wanted Maybe to play so many. his name because of like concerns with Marvel. Maybe. Is that what it is? Okay, sharpshooter. I don't know. Sharpshooter. Maybe. Um, everyone says this class is boring. Is this true? Because, I mean, in PvP, I, I would say they're. Oh, huh? I tried him out in JP. I, th I thought it was super boring, but they buffed him a lot and I they gave him this. an extra attack. And I, I think that my experiences with that at the time are, are, aren't valid anymore because I think he looks a lot more interesting now. Yeah. yeah. I've heard in PvP, you know, from a lot of my friends, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty decent. They're not like, you know, they're not like bottom tier. Uh, they're He's decent. And they're good at He's poking. He's like a good mid-elo mid harasser. Like, yeah. I, I, I always see a lot of Hawkeyes in that like, like gold to plat range. And um, if you've ever been a PvPer that loves being a mosquito. Yeah. And you so just love annoying. being really annoying. So annoying, dude. They're so annoying. It, it, it's a great class if that's, if that's your thing. Okay, so then how do they perform in PvE? PvE, they're one of the true range classes of the game. So uh, because all of his damage is concentrated in just a few ranged attacks, he can actually spend a lot of time kind of meticulously positioning himself to get ready for the next attack. A lot of his attacks keep him rooted in place, so you have to be in the right position to really do attacks. And also, I should really point this out, ranged, cl ranged classes don't use positionals, so they don't have back attack, they don't have head attack. They can attack from any angle. Basically, all melee classes in the game do use positional, so there's an advantage to attacking from the front or the back, depending on the classes and skills. The Hawkeye is a true range class, and so you can spend a lot of time studying the, the, the boss and getting in the right spot and then doing your damage and rinse, cycle, and repeat. Um, so he's good for people who really want that range uh, playstyle for real. Yeah, you have this cool sniper shot that you load up. The sound effect on that's really cool. And then you got mm -hmm. the bird. So I, it was a class that I really wanted to play because in Maple Story, I always wanted to play a Bowmaster, I think it was. or mm -hmm. They were so cool. Okay. Artillerist or Blaster. Uh, 
I know this class is going to be really annoying for a lot of people in PvP out the gate because it was super annoying for me. I know that I you use love it to abuse people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know you love playing at LTS. So, um, but I know that in PVE content, they can tank a lot of mechanics. They have some utility and shielding, correct? And then they also sometimes are a bit stationary. And I've had some of my friends that try to hop on a artillerist, and they end up dying to a lot of the mechanics because they're just seated into the ground. So. How good are they in PvE, and who do you think the class is for? Arguably one of the most underrated classes and underplayed classes, but in a really, really, really good one. As you mentioned, he's very tanky. In fact, of all the gunners, he's the tankiest gunner uh, of them all. And maybe your friends didn't get to play a really geared one, but the, the, the top-end builds for an artillerist use full agility for the most part. So a really geared one... They, they're, they're pretty quick, but, you know, their attacks have a time delay on them. So you place the attack, and then a couple seconds later, yeah. the damage comes out. And so that can be frustrating at times, because as we mentioned, boss, boss patterns, they're random. So sometimes you just, you can't control it. The boss will do a back step, and then anyone who has a time-delayed attack that's placed in that spot, it'll just miss. Um, but he's been well known to be an incredibly, incredibly powerful prog class just because of how reliable and how durable he is while doing very competitive damage and high neutralization ratings and all that kind of stuff. So he's, he's the perfect class for someone who wants to play like a kind of an underdog class or if you want to be a hipster and play something that's like <laughs> really, really good that no one's really playing. It, it, that should be right up your alley. I was gonna um, say I was gonna say it fits you well with the beanie, but then I'm wearing a beanie, so I don't... <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a beanie because he's wearing a beanie. Okay, and he's wearing glasses because I'm wearing glasses. Yeah, I need them, and my eyes are getting messed up. Okay. Comes with the age. Yeah, it's bad. I'm getting old. Okay, so yeah. gunslinger. We'll touch on devil. Let's do let's do gunslinger and devil hunter at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, just for time's sake. So gunslinger, really quickly. You hear a lot of good things about them in PvP. If you've been playing the game at all in RU, you probably are... Um, you found them to be super annoying, right? They'll lock you down. They do a ton of damage. However, I picked up one, and I quickly realized it is not the class for me. They're absolutely insane. They bring so much damage, but with all of that mobility that you have, at least on the Gunslinger... It's very, they're so squishy. So it's very easy to be floor POV. And it's probably one of the classes, this is my a little bit of elitism coming out, that I'll be reluctant to bring into my groups early on in the game because I know how difficult it was for me to pick up the class. Not that it's hard to switch between the guns, but it's just you run, I felt like I was running into so many mechanics. But it was so fun to play because I was doing so much damage. So I'll let you touch on it, but I do want to say that from my experience playing other MMOs, it's a very, at least a gunslinger, feels like a very high APM class. So if you really mm. like that high APM and you're just like, you know, getting really engaged with your class, I don't think any class does it better. And I think it's honestly, in my experience, one of the most fun classes to play, uh, but it's taxing. It was a lot for me. And I still play it. It's just, yeah, it's a little, it, it's a lot. Insane yeah. in both types of content. But Gunslinger and Devil Hunter are classes for people who really want to show off um, because good ones are, are incredible. Uh, they, they, they just they press so many buttons because unlike other classes, most classes only have eight skills plus their ultimate skill plus their identity skills so around 10 skills. These classes have 16 skills that they're working with across three different stances, which are buttons to press in and of themselves. And so it's a really high skill ceiling class in general. And as you mentioned, they are the squishiest. They have the lowest HP and defense coefficient in the game. But the damage that they do is incredible. Devil Hunter is for people who want to play a close-ranged, uh, positional-based um, shotgun character. His shotgun is his main form of damage, and basically all of his damage is packed into that. While the Gunslinger is more versatile, her shotgun is weaker than the Devil Hunter's, but her sniper rifle is far stronger. And in both cases, their pistols are for applying debuffs and mobility. Yeah. So Gunslinger may feel a little bit better to play because, again, they're both squishy, but she has the ability to attack from any direction. She doesn't yeah. have any positions to worry about. But the Devil Hunter, because he's such a squishy class and he has to always basically be behind the enemy, 
it can be a little bit tougher to play him. So he is for people who are looking for a challenge yeah. um, that want to play something that they could really excel and and show off on, as I mentioned. Yeah, that's definitely when you're gonna grief. So when I'm when I'm on my gunslinger, it's always the shotgun when I die. Because it's like I mm. have to get in there to do it. You know, you're switching between your pistols to get the crit buff up or whatever, or the debuff, and then you switch over to your sniper and it's you're you're good, right? At a ranged. Yep. It's a crit buff, right? Yeah, they have they have a great crit buff because it's a constant synergy. So yeah. everyone just always has ten percent more crit when they're playing with those classes. It's so fun. Such a fun yeah. class, but yeah, it's definitely gonna be a challenging class. If you're open for that high APM class and you, you want a challenge, uh it's super fun. And there's a lot of cool videos out there of them you know, of them soloing content and it, it, it's it's a fun class to watch and to play. Yep. Just challenging. Yep. Okay, mages. Not that many to talk about here. I know a lot of people are wanting for Sork because there's just not really that traditional mage class yet. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that comes soon. I'd hope so. But let's talk about the Bard first since mm -hmm. uh, you know it's a class that insane in PvP. However, I would say that getting into the game, having a support in general in PvP is so nice because it, it is solo queue. But I would say that the Holy Knight might have an easier time because the Bard isn't going to bring out as much damage as the Holy Knight. And I think that you're going to be really reliant on your teammates as any support. Yep. Um, but in PV content, also just, I love playing with Bards. They're so great to play alongside of. Can you share any of your experience with the Bard and how do they perform early on in Tier 1 content? Uh, so one thing that is kind of rough about Bards early on is that it's... Remember how we talked about Berserker and how it needs gear to really, you know, build up its its uh, his Berserker state. Bard, unfortunately, there's there's some similarities drawn there because because of the lack of gearing early on, it's very difficult for her to build up her identity quickly to apply things like the heals and whatnot. And also, she needs her class engraving and all that kind of stuff for the heals to even feel really good in the first place. So, early on, your your role is really just applying the buffs to your allies. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, supports always their primary role is giving attack buffs so that they that their weight in the party is equal to or greater than if you had brought a fourth damage dealer. Uh, that being said, it feels really good. She has so many tools to prevent damage to allies, and there's no greater feeling than giving someone a shield and then seeing them get hit, and then you're like... <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm looking out for you. Yeah. And then um, later on, the playstyle evolves and she's able to build up her identity gauge really quickly and she can put out heals quickly. And at that point, she is almost like that traditional healer from other games. But at the end of the day, she's still making that choice between, oh, do I, you know, give them a big damage buff or do I give them heals? And yeah. so um, there, there, there is decision making involved. Uh, also, I should really mention this. While the entry point for a bard is really low, it's very easy to get into. It is another class that is a really high skill ceiling. There are skills that you can time to save someone in a life or death emergency. So if someone's about to die, you can place a small circle underneath them and just completely save them. And that requires really fast reaction time. So you could feel incredible if you're if you get good at that. And then the other thing is... If you buff someone and they don't have skills available, then your buff is useless, right? You have to understand with a bard the right moments to give buffs to your allies so that they are at their strongest at the most opportune moments. And so there's a bit of learning as a bard player what other classes do and also boss patterns the best times to give those buffs. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot to learn as a bard that you can that you can master it with. The game's really about burst windows for sure. So, you know, maybe you'll be using voice chat, in-game voice chat, and you guys can communicate when you, you know, when you're getting ready to deal damage when you have those burst windows. Hey, I'm... they don't have to ping anymore. Yeah, they can, yeah. They can scream at yeah. their <laughs> teammates instead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Bard's insane though. So if you're looking forward to playing that class. Also some of the best skins in the game, in my opinion. So, mm. okay. Summoner, really good in PvP. If you leave the summoner alone, they will just wreck the entire team. The Phoenix just obliterates yep. the entire team. Um, also good in PvE content. I know right now they're looking really strong in Korea, right? That's what I've heard from a few people, that people are saying summoners look really strong. Is this true? 
Yeah, so you remember how I mentioned how they were really OP at the beginning of season two? Yeah. She's always had this thing about her that nothing could ever replace, and that is a part of her damage is based off of summons. And so while she's running around dodging attacks, her summons are just like slapping the boss, yeah. doing damage passively. So part of her damage, not all of it, but part of her damage is always automated. So she's always been very good in prog-based content. And she is also another true ranged class. So she has that benefit of being able to attack from a distance, not worry too much about those learning the patterns as much as just th tossing attacks out there and just kind of moving between patterns. So she's always been in a fairly good spot and she was a very desirable class and still is when new content comes out because she's reliable. Yeah. Um, and then in PvP, as you mentioned, if you if you let her free cast, so your team will win. Obliterate yeah. the entire team, yeah. So if you're waiting for like Sork or a more mage light class summoner might be your best bet for the time being so not really like a warlock i don't know how to describe the class it's like it's a summoner <laughs> that's the best way to describe the class so yeah definitely a uh, really good option a lot of my friends are going to be playing summoner for pvp at least and they're great in pv content as well okay on to the assassins now uh yeah, let's last ones. let's start with the blade or death blade not sure why you just you could just call it blade Edge yeah <laughs> it's fun okay so this class i have a bone to pick with in pvp so <laughs> as cheesy as this sounds i started with the blade it was the first class that i had picked up when i started playing on lost dark ru about four months ago or so came back to it just the other day after just getting tired of playing Zerker because the cooldowns are really long and i didn't enjoy it that much that's one of the biggest gripes with Zerker. That class is insane. It's absolutely yeah. I can in tier one in in tier one or the launch of the game, Blade seems insane. It's just Zerker, but way better in PvP. And I know this is like that's my gripe. And I'm playing that class in PvP because it's nuts, dude. It's got so much super armor, so much mobility. The cooldowns are so low. People people do kind of complain that her kit is overloaded, and it's been this way since she was released. Yeah. You know, it it, it almost makes no sense how she can basically contest in a super armor fight with like a destroyer yeah. and it's like and then come out on top while also putting out ridiculous damage she's she's insane when it comes to like in, in a close range fight there's there's almost no class that can stand up to her except for like maybe lance master but that's not even out for a while present. who knows yeah. but with that I wanted to play one, and I remember a long time ago watching a video translated from Korean, like it was a Korean video translated to English, and people say that Blade isn't that great in PvE. I know they got some changes, they have this, they have this burst build, you can touch on that. However, somebody did tell me then, so much misinformation, which is why I wanted to make this, in Tier 1 content, Blade is really good. So... Is this true? Is Blade not the best class in PvE? Or what is your experience with Blade? I know you have one and you've been trying one out, been watching your stream. So what do you think about the Blade in general for PvE content? Uh, first of all, I don't think there's a huge difference between Tier 1 and Tier 3 as far as her viability goes. Okay. She's always been like, okay in PvE. Not, 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 nothing crazy, but the problem is in Lost Ark, because nothing is bad, anything that's okay is basically yeah it's not bad. yeah yeah there, there's no like there's no like bad decent good there's just decent and good in a lot of cases uh but she did receive a lot of buffs recently and one of the buffs made it so that she kind of fits in with party comps a little bit better because previously she could only really play with melees because her party buff attack speed only and, yeah it, it it gave head attack and back attack damage oh I I'm thinking about the one for PvP. You don't, you, you don't use that same buff. I haven't played it in PvE. You you can you can use it. In, you do use it in uh, PvE as well. But her primary damage increasing uh, buff gives 12% more head attack okay. and back attack damage. So ranged classes couldn't make use of that. So very recently they changed it so that part of it can also apply to all damage. Okay. So she fits in bet with other comms better, and then she's also received a bunch of buffs across the board. So now instead of being like mediocre, she's fairly capable. And then besides for that, as you mentioned, I start, I made a blade recently because uh, they made one of her new builds viable, the burst build. And that one is uh, extremely fun for people who just want to make like super big numbers, but it is extremely hard to play as well yeah. in high end raids because of the timing required to use your big attack. Um, I think people who play her 
enjoy her just because of the type of class she is and her aesthetic and the way that her skills are. Uh, but uh, she's not like like the craziest class in PVE. But yeah. you'll do fine on her, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've re she's probably quickly became one of my favorite classes to play, even if before I used to say that she was kind of mediocre. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've played a lot of content with Blades in the past, so haven't mm. noticed anything. Again, you don't, again, the game is just so different. I don't, you know, I'm sure if you're doing, like, the most difficult content in the game, maybe you start become, being a bit more nitpicky, but I'm still doing fairly difficult content that most of my chat hasn't even done, and I've never is thought about... Jeff? Oh, 100%, dude. I'm so tired of the Keck Ws. <laughs> I'm so tired of the floor POVs. Of course it's a jab. I can't wait. I cannot wait to get in a group with these guys and do content. I cannot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spam Keck Ws in party <laughs> chat, in voice chat. <laughs> I'm so in voice chat? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm tired oh, of it, dude. It is, man. I've been getting ripped up. Okay, moving on to... Uh, it's a hard game. People will find out rather quickly. We'll, we'll talk about that in the other video. I mean, this is going on for a mm. while, but yeah. All right, last class. The Shadow Hunter or Demonic. Uh, really good class in PvP. I can touch on that. Has definitely great peeling potential and a lot of poke potential. I think its toolkit does well with the current meta of the game with how much range ability it does have. And um, your Demonic form is extremely powerful. And that's kind of when you start getting your ability to engage a lot more without getting interrupted as much. So super strong class. Really cool class fantasy. And a person came in my chat today and was worried about their PvE performance. And I said they're just fine. So can you touch on that a bit? So when it came to PvE with, uh, with, with the Shadowhunter class, um, the reason you don't see a lot of them is because in, in like other regions, for people who are like researching this kind of stuff, is because, yes, for the better majority of Season 2, she was terrible. Um, it was during a time where people would reject the class because the person was playing that class. But they received a ton of buffs, and at this point, they're very, very competitive. And NAEU will be on the balance patch where they're very good. Not to mention they have two viable builds, one where they do transform into that badass demon, uh, demon form, and then one where they don't transform at all, and both are very good. In fact, when my party week one cleared Avoshud, which was an incredibly difficult feat. Yeah, I remember that. It was we didn't, we didn't have one demonic. We had two, and we had one of each build. So it should really paint the class as very, very, very capable uh, in, in PvE. And um, also, uh, the, the demon form build is one of the most economic classes in the game. And what I mean by that is there's two classes in this game which are extremely budget-friendly because of their itemization later on in future content. There's a little bit of a spoiler, but they can itemize extremely cheap. I'm, I'm talking like fractions cheaper than every other class in the game. And those two classes are the Demon Form Shadow Hunter and the Scouter class, which, I mean, we're not going to touch on it because it's That's not That's why Canva right has 12 of those. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, they're, they're, it's extremely cheap to play those classes. And for people who want to play like very efficiently with their money uh, and, and like investing their gold properly without having to go to break the bank to, uh, to, to build up their sets, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a great, great class now. All right. That's it. That was all the classes, a breakdown of what you can expect with classes in Lost Ark. Uh, how the game works overall was a lot of info. There will be timestamps listed below so you can kind of skip around depending on the topic that you're interested in. Um, Saint, why don't you give yourself a shout out? Okay, where can they find you? It's somewhere here on the screen. Uh, maybe you can find me on my uh, Twitch channel where I really do most of my content. And I, I really am new to YouTube. YouTube in general, so I, I, I occasionally put out videos uh, about just miscellaneous stuff on, on my YouTube, and you can find that there as well. You can also find me on Twitter at Saints on Live. Follow his Twitch, follow his YouTube. I'm trying to tell him to sell sell his, <laughs> his, his YouTube a bit more, so we're going to work on his YouTube. He's got a lot of great content, super informative guy, uh, and just knows a lot about the game, which is why I gravitated towards him and I've learned a lot from him. And he's been really, really helpful. And his stream is just really fun. So very cozy content. And also his chat's, his chat's fantastic. So go ahead and hit him up as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will be doing another one of these. 
uh, breaking down what you can expect going into the game and how it differs in tier three content. So that will come out somewhere within this week. So be on the lookout for that. And we'll probably be wearing the exact same clothes. So uh, <laughs> anyways, Should thank you guys. Quickly go change. Yeah, maybe I can go change. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Peace. See you guys.